So, it is a great honor for me to introduce to all of you Dr. Gustavo Arguello, with whom I worked for many years and who was a great mentor to me. Okay. Well, thank you very much for this kind introduction, Walter. And well, I hope every all of you will uh, enjoy <laughs> this uh, conversation. So I will start, first of all, changing the, the way I'm going to talk because I have to put the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay, now let's see. Uh, nevertheless, I would like to uh, begin saying that the physical chemistry behind global warming will be the main part of my talk. But first of all, I would like to start saying some very brief words about my two mentors, which were Professor Eduardo Stadico and, as you said already, Mario Molina, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Uh, this is a picture of Professor Stadico by the time I started my PhD studies. So it was approximately in 1976. At that time, many of the research lines of the Department of Physical Chemistry had, and still have, because we have a long tradition of that, had to do with the kinetics and photochemistry of gaseous fluorinated substances. And this is why Walter already told that I specialized in fluorinated molecules. Okay? So, Professor Stadico was, <coughs> uh, was the head of the Department of Physical Chemistry at that time, and he became my PH director, PhD director. So he was my advisor uh, during the time I did my PhD work. Therefore, I could not escape from that tradition of the department and of Dr. Stavico himself. And during my PhD, I began to work with fluorinated substances. The first one I took was CF3I. So that is trifluoroiodine methane. With that, I made at my PhD thesis, uh, working in chemical lasers. Now, due to the scientific diplomacy of Professor Stariko, he soon became engaged in management serving first as vice dean of our faculty. Then he was the dean of our faculty. And later he became vice rector first and then the rector of the whole National University of Cork. Besides, he serves also in serious politics, and, and I would like to remark this word, serious politics, as Minister of Science and Technology of the province of Cordoba, so of our state of Cordoba. And then finally, he got back to science, where he served as the president of the National Academy of Sciences. In this picture, you see Dr. Stadik, which is already a little bit older than the, the, the picture before, and as president of the National Academy of Sciences during my appoint, appointment as an academic. Along those years, Dr. Stadik had risen a sound-based and well-renowned group in physical chemistry that could run by itself. So he prepared a lot of people who were able to continue working in physical chemistry without his advice anymore. <clears throat> but what the, the central point here is that Dr. Starico implanted in many of us the seed of scientific research. And I am a living example of it. Uh, that, is, uh, that is everything I, I will say about Dr. Starico at the moment. And I would like to switch a little bit to Mario Molina. My approach to Mario Molina was as early in 1979. I remember he was seeking a person to work in his lab in a project involving vacuum UV fluorescence. And at that time, I remember I was working here in, in the University of Cordoba, and I remember two things. The first one, was that Dr. Stadico had worked with Mario Molina in Berkeley by the time that Mario was doing his PhD. And the second thing that I remember was that Mario himself had made his own PhD using chemical lasers, which was my goal in, in, in the doctoral work. Therefore, <laughs> it took me only two minutes to go to talk with Dr. Starico and to get his consent to go to Mario's lab to work with him for a year. After 
that time and after returning to my country, I dedicated myself completely to the university and to scientific research. And I had the opportunity of seeing Dr. Sariku getting older until the age of 86 when he died. This picture here is at the age of 85 and he was still active by that time. Well, in any case, uh, I will not enter now in many details about the life of or, or the achievements of Mario Molina because probably you all know what was his career. I would only say that I had the opportunity to present Mario Molina at the, at the Inaugur University when he was awarded with the Honoris Causa uh, Professorship. So immediately after this conference in the university, we went to the Academy of Sciences where we uh, formally signed the act of admission of Mario as an academic. 